Okay, boys and girls, this is a story about Pippi Longstocking. In Swedish, she is called Pippi Longstrump. And you can see on the map where Sweden is, far, far away from Australia. This is a book that I read when I was a kid, and it's written by Astrid Lindgren. And I will continue this book later, and it's part one out of three. This is Tommy and Annika. They are two very nice and polite siblings who lives in Sweden. You can see them play in their backyard. They're playing something called croquet, and uh, it's like cricket. Even if they have fun together, they really like to have a friend to play with. Next to Tommy and Annika's garden is another garden, and on that garden is a massive villa. A villa is basically a large house on a big block of land. This villa is called Villa Villikulla. No one lives there. The house is completely empty. Thomas says, it's strange that no one moves into that house. Annika replies, yes, somebody should live there. Someone with kids that you could play with. But on a beautiful day, when Tommy and Annika are looking over the fence to Villa Villikulla, they see something extraordinary. A small, small girl is walking by carrying a horse. Tommy and Annika can't believe their eyes as a girl is not strong enough to lift the horse. But this girl can. Her name is Pippi Longstocking and she is amazingly strong. No one in the world is as strong as she is. She is rich as well. She has a suitcase full of gold coins and now she has moved in to Villa Villicula. She lives there all by herself. Only her horse and a little monkey called Mr. Nilsson will live there as well. Pippi has no mom or dad, which she thinks is kind of nice, as no one can tell her to go to sleep when she is having fun. She does everything the way she wants. When Pippi sees Tommy and Annika, she asks, Do you want to eat brekker with me? Yes, please, says Tommy and Annika. Who will make the food? asks Annika. Well, that will be me, says Pippi. Yes, Pippi does everything herself. Here she's making pancakes. When the pancakes are done, she throws them high in the air all the way to Tommy and Annika. They are sitting on an old blow chest and they are eating as much as they can. They were the tastiest pancakes I ever eaten, says Tommy. Pippi has a broken egg in her hair. It happened to get there when she was to whisking the pancake batter. But Pip is equally happy about it. I always heard that jolk should be good for the hair, she says. It might make my plates shiny and strong. Pippi bakes gingerbread as well. She rolls out the dough on the kitchen floor. Because a baking sheet is not enough when you have to bake at least 500 gingerbread, says Pippi. Mr. Nilsson, the little monkey, helps her. But the horse must not help. He lives on the porch. That's why he doesn't appear in this picture. Why in the world do you have the horse on the veranda? Asks Tommy. All the horses he knows lives in a stable. Well, says Pippi. If, he, if I had him in the kitchen, he would just eat uh, all the dough. After a while, Tommy and Annika go home. But they are so happy they have found a new playmate. Pippi can play with her own hair and button her corset at the same time. And when she eats, she lays on the table and has the food on a chair. When she washes herself, she dips her whole head into the sink. She likes getting her hair sweat. Sometimes she mops the kitchen floor by pouring out a bucket of water on the floor ties two scrubbing brushes under her feet, and then she skates across the floor. And when she chops up wood, she never chops less than five logs at a time. When the old wood oven starts to suit, she goes up on the roof to clean the chimney. She does everything herself. To be continued. <laughs>